hello, 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 and you have reached the Tide Divine, and my name is Paula, I am your storyteller, your historian, your founder, and I have my two co-hosts, I uh, have Jane, um, and he will introduce himself, he is our bridge, and we have Tiffany, who is our strategizer, and everybody will realize why, and she will keep us on time, he will keep us all together. So, and I'm going to keep it talking. So, I am going to go straight into the message because what we're talking about today, I don't, I don't even know how to say this. It's like, what what happened? How did we get to where we are? And um, I was trying to make the agenda for it, and it's just like, I can only say, it can only just be, what? <laughs> because it, it's two years. And we're in a place that we have no idea. Well, I didn't. I get up every morning and ask myself, what is this? How did we get here? It's, and, or is this going to get any better? And where, where are our goals and, and whatever? So I am going to transfer this over because I'm going to let them uh, uh, introduce them, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about where we're trying to get with this because my my brain is moving so fast because I want to tell you so much, at, but I'm going to try to take it one day at a time. So I'm going to go over to – I try to sandwich everybody in. So I'll let them introduce themselves and on their own how they want to do it. it we'll go from James to Tiffany or Tiffany to James. All right. Yeah, that's cool. How you doing? I'm James. I almost uh, – started to sing a song when you said that little line. I woke up in the morning and I asked myself. You know, that's a Tupac line. But uh, oh, uh, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, I wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? Anyways, but anyway, oh, uh, I'm, I'm James. It. I know that's I a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My name is James. I'm, I'm known as a bridge. I'm here to make myself a, as a tool uh, to bridge the gap between uh, what we have in our families and our communities. I believe that one day that we can see that our problems are more the same than different. That way we can finally come together and start to make those changes that we need. Yeah. All right. And hello, family. I'm Tiffany, and I am the strategist. And my goal is to help bring um, actual physical things that we can do to improve our lives and also improve the lives of our families and also take our strength out into our community at large. Yes, yes. And so you will hear me refer to James as Jamie or and tip to tip tip because that's just how it, everything came about. So the, the, so when you know, when you go onto our web, uh, our uh, site, our web uh, site, and you see the pictures, and you see the female, um, and you'll know that's Tip Tip, and that's who I'm talking about, and then you'll see Jamie. And we call, call him until he got old enough to tell us. I remember one time I was just like, Jamie, uh, so I, was, I was asking him something, and he said, well, and his voice had started to change. And I remember I was talking to him, and I was just like, what in the devil? Well, at first, because he answered the phone, hello, and I thought, is this? Who is this? Who are you? He's like, it's James. I was like, Jamie, who is that? He's like, it's James. I'm just like, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and Tiffany, she, she, sometimes she won't even respond to me calling her Tip Tip. So, it is just because they're getting older and I still see them as those little children. And so, uh, but, so but this is, uh, I say all that to say, that when I, I woke up this morning, I wake up every morning and say, where are we? How did we get here? And I love that, that the song that, that the, what James has just said, Tupac was something more than what we thought he was. We thought he was just what the world has thought. I thought he was. Uh, I love his, I love, and people are just like, oh, you like rap? I don't like rap. I like conscientious rap. I like when things make you think. And so, but I was sitting there, and I was, I was talking to someone. I don't know whether I was talking to James or Tiffany, and every day I'm, like, frustrated. And I'm just, I'm thinking, 
really? I, do you believe that? That's bullcrap. That's and people are looking and they're looking like they're um, from another world. They're looking like uh, they look like. You ever seen? Uh, there's a, a movie that came out a long time ago. It's called The uh, Stepper Wives. Everybody's sitting there looking like the Stepper Wives. And mm-hmm. I sit there and I thought, and really, you're confused. You think that this is you're not. It, Okay, I'm confused. And so if you're not confused, I'm confused. And then I have to stop the thing because I am a Generation X uh, from I'm that generation who really we're we're a little uh, different. We're in between that generation of my parents or whatever they, they were called. Uh, what was that? What did they call the older generation? The one that's the whole, they had all the kids and um, the baby boomers. The baby boomers. Sometimes I lose, I lose my, my chain of thought, so that's why I have Tiffany Chase here to remind me. But the baby boomers and then uh, Tiffany's generation, and they're, I, I don't know, to me, they're almost, they're almost, they are, they're like the baby boomers. And so we're like sandwiched in between them because they're, they're, they're so serious and they're so whatever, and it's just a thing. Oh, I grew up with Bonanza and... The Little House on the Prairie, and, uh, well, later on, good times, uh, I had to put that in there, because it was in that you saw, you know, you saw a piece of yourself, but most of it, for the longest time, you know, we had something that was called the, uh, the, um, and I don't know uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I am talking about we have uh, two generations. And I'm sandwiched in between them. I have my mother's generation, the baby boomers. And then we have, they call them, I think they call them, call you all the generation X, uh, Tiffany? What are y'all called? Honestly, I stopped. I don't really pay that much attention. I believe I'm generation X, but I'm not really sure. I was born in 1980. I think they call you all the, um, uh, what they call them? Uh, I forget what they call them. Uh, but it's that uh, from the, 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 the 2000 era. Uh, and and I'm sitting there thinking, where 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 am I? Did did I do I am I confused? Am I in a place where? And then I thought I had to think how I grew up. We grew up on um, uh, that we had three channel uh, television channels, <laughs> and, and there were certain things we were allowed to watch, and there were cause there was something uh, there was some comedy thing that would come on late at night. Uh, but he was some British guy, and my parents only watched that, and I can't remember what his name is. And that was not something we were like, and that in The Wizard of Oz. And that is, and you you lived your life. You know, I most of my friends were, I know people hate to say this, but this is the way we grew up, uh, were Caucasians. And, you know, as, we, as I got older, I gravitated, because that's what my parents were trying to, to, to get our our culture into us because we were so inundated in other things. But then we wake up one day and we have someone sending us messages on our phones and we got someone who gets up and, and people are not telling the truth. Every day, five, 50 times a day you're hearing this. You're inundated with stuff and you don't know where you are. You don't know what it is. And so this is what we're talking about today. I have, all I can say is I'm confused. That's what our topic is today. So I don't know whether they are understanding where I am because, you know, I will talk. So I don't know whether I need to get the strategizer in there to get everything together or uh, James to, 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 to put everything in order and then James to bring everything together. How do y'all want to do that? <laughs> Well, uh, I know, I know one of the main topics is like how how do we get here? So mm-hmm. I guess the discussion should be, uh, you know, you know what what got us in this place that we're in right now, you know, and what kind of moves were were how, what kind of moves have we taken, you know, to get yeah. here? What kind of moves were kind of forced of were forced on us to get here, you know, uh, and really. I wanted to hear kind of like your take on it, like uh, what are some of the things that you've seen wrong, Paula, 
in, in your uh-huh. generation. And, you know, we can both talk, we can all talk about, you know, some of the things that we've seen that went wrong in, in our mm-hmm. generation. So, I mean, what, yeah. are, what are some of the first things um, that you actually seen um, what I'm start, to, is, start to take place? Oh, go ahead. Uh-huh. I'm seeing No, it's good. Go ahead. Yeah, we're totally disconnected from one another. Um, mm-hmm. We had cell phones, uh, but <laughs> that you put that away. Uh, you only had so many. We had telephones. We went from telephones to cell phones. I don't care what it was. You had certain times of the day to get on that phone. You had certain things times of the day to do your homework. There are certain times of the day that you sat there and you talked to your parents to find out what your day was. There were things... And my Caucasian friends, even though their parents were probably uh, iffy, you know, you know, some of them were there, some of them weren't, but they were they respected not me, but they respected my parents. So therefore, that mm-hmm. respect went over to me. They never went out of out of their way to make me feel bad. And now it's just like right. everybody's sensitive, but they're not sensitive. They're sensitive to the LBGQ, okay, that's real nice. They're sensitive to the women uh, being touched and all this kind of stuff, but they're not sensitive to the children that we have there dying at our borders. They're not sensitive to to um, someone not someone uh, shooting someone in the car and not having a reason for it. They're not sensitive to any of that. So that that's part of it but that's that's the biggest part of it that i've seen uh that has been that has been changing over the last i'd say five years but it really got okay, bad so in the last two years yeah i mean so so what was the response like as far as the community is concerned when you were growing up well how do people respond to that stuff now i mean compared to well, how they respond to it now, well, well how do they respond was, then compared to how they respond to it now? Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm sorry because you know I'm a I'm a fast talker. Um, it they responded to like when my I don't know whether they were some some want to call themselves white, some want to call themselves Caucasian. I keep it at Caucasian. When my Caucasian friends would catch the bus with me to come to my house, um, uh, the black people felt a little a little sort of sort of kind of way. But I knew that my parents didn't feel that way. When I, the same thing when I went to their house. But they weren't going to go out of their way to physically hurt you. Uh, they weren't going to go out of their way, well, not to the, the white girl, but maybe to me, uh, they would say something to hurt my feelings. But it was the parents were in control. It wasn't. Oh, it just it's all about how Jimmy feels. You know, if that's what he wants to do. Jimmy don't know. Jimmy's five years old. He only knows what his bubble allows him and what you have in- introduced him to. Now it's just, it's, the, it's like the tail wagging the dog. It's, the, it's, it's reversed. It's like the parents don't have mm-hmm. as much sense as the kids have. That's, that's one thing that I've, gotcha. I've seen. Got you. Tip, tip. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I thought you said my name. But for me, the differences I see are, I guess I was talking to somebody today about this, how people are so disconnected. Like, it's, it's even hard to, like, make friends with people because they can't get away from behind their screen. Like, people are, will talk to you more easily through text than actually have a face-to-face conversation with you. And, yes. like, I always, I always – talk about my military experience because I spent so much of my adulthood in the military. When you see mm. kids these days, it's like they're awkward and they don't know how yeah. to have a conversation and, like, they can't follow the nuance of a conversation and, like, humor escapes yeah. them. Like, they, they're they almost robotic. <laughs> like, they don't, they don't know yeah. how, to, how to act because they've never actually practiced acting with people, and when they're, they're, you know, they're in school, they're, the school is just pumping out robots. You know, they're just getting them ready to pass the test, and then they send them up to the next test, you know, the next level. Exactly. And they're not really learning, yeah. you know, the social things. And, like, I always comment to my husband, you know, 
were old, the old parents. Every Christmas, you know, the day of Christmas and the day after Christmas and that whole two weeks after, you don't ever see any kids outside. Like, when we were kids, we could not wait to get outside. They couldn't keep us in the house. And yeah, now kids right. don't go outside. They don't play with each other. Like, right now, like, I went, I went to the store today, and it was a nice day. It wasn't terrible. It was rain too bad. It was nice enough for kids to play outside. There were two kids out of my whole neighborhood that were outside. And we have <laughs> dozens of kids in this neighborhood, dozens. Only two of them were outside. Oh so I, I think oh that's – people are just so disconnected, and they don't even realize it. Like, I always get on my husband about putting the TV yeah. on for our baby because it's like the, I don't want her to be babysat by the TV. She doesn't miss it if you turn it off. Mm-hmm. Turn it off and let her play, right. interact yeah. with her. I don't want her to be a, a drone and, you know, be addicted to the television and sit there for hours at a time. I don't want that. Right. Because it, it, mm-hmm. it takes them out of that creativity, out of imagination, exactly. out of emoting with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm listening. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree I, with that. It's uh it's a total it's a total disconnection. Um the kids are not learning the same way they did learn. Uh, you know, just just on a fundamental level. You know, I I believe kids are more tuned into social media than they are just even reading in itself. So I think yeah. that's a huge thing that we kind of got we got we got to change. You know, and right. here I know I'm trying I'm trying to get with a group of people here, um, a group of guys that's here in this community to kind of start a little uh, educational club, so to speak, especially for young kids, young brothers, young black brothers and sisters. Uh, to, to, so they can start knowing their history. So I, I, a, a lot of this goes with us not really knowing ourselves, at least I believe a lot of this goes with not, us not knowing ourselves, us not mm-hmm. taking the extra time to learn and to teach uh, these kids uh, who we really are at the end of the day. So, um, again, that's always been my life, me trying to bridge the gap and me trying to put two and two together and uh, – yeah, de- definitely this needs to change from here on out because the way that our community is going, and not just our community, just in, in general, the way that society is going, uh, we're, we're dealing with a dumbed-down nation. And then uh, yeah. I, I know my cousin, my, my, one of my cousins here, he'd be like, yo, these, these phones are smarter than we are. These smartphones are smarter than us now. You know, and I don't want to – I really don't want to have that type of generation where, you know, the computer's – are more informative than what people can actually be. Right about you're right about that. Like, people are like, the, there's no need to really learn anything now. You know, it's all about researchability. And while it's nice to be mm-hmm. resourceful, it, it's also something to be said for actually having knowledge, your own knowledge in your head. You know. But yeah, they don't even exactly. have to think anymore. They're online to perform. They're mm-hmm. online because. We got this uh, generation of, uh, I remember when it first started, yeah, it was, it was nice. Uh, what is it called? Reality TV. Everybody thinks they're a reality mm-hmm. TV star. And that, but yeah. they don't realize that they are public, there are things that go with the, you uh, talking like this. And then they don't understand anything, and then our culture is gone. Yeah. We have no culture. We, the stuff that we mm-hmm. used to do. Like, my parents would come home, and there was nothing. My dad would call and say, well, you know, Axel is coming over today. Uh, can we get something? Or Miss Kelly is coming over today. Can you do blah, 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 blah. We knew how far we to go. It's just like the kids have no, uh, what's the word? It's almost as though the kids have, like I said, it's the tail wagging the dog. They they have no experience, but the, go ahead. I'm sorry, Tip. I was going to say, there's a lot of things that, that they're lacking. They don't have supervision. They don't have guidance. They don't have rules. Um, yep. They don't have accountability. Because you mentioned um, the sensitivity of people. It's, there's this weird mix of being hypersensitive and at the same time being completely desensitized to things that are really going on around you. And it's a really right. weird place that we're in because you got kids that you can't even talk to them and tell them, hey, you messed this up. Because right. if you tell them that they made a mistake, then they got to go see their therapist. And there's nothing wrong. I don't <laughs> get the wrong idea. 
No, and I'm being, I'm, it, it sounds funny, but I'm being serious, and I don't want people to think but that I have true. a problem with, with mental illness because I don't. I think that, you know, if you need therapy, I, I am in therapy. I'm currently in therapy, so I don't want people to think that I have a problem with mental illness. I just think that right. we are raising, and I hate this expression. I'm not, I'm not even going to use this expression. We're raising really soft, non-resilient uh, man babies and, and woman babies that can't right. hold anything, mm-hmm. you can't correct them, you can't give them a task and expect them to achieve it. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, and they're they not, they're not going to go above and beyond. They're not even trying to do bare minimum, let alone go above and beyond, you know? Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. They know nothing. That it, I remember it, we had, and we because we were earlier, and we're going to go back to that, but I just, I saw, uh, the missing kids was, you know, there was too much. I don't want to inundate you all with and the, our thing is not for you because fear is not something that you can operate on. You need to operate on knowledge mm-hmm. and why you're doing what you're doing and and how and right. what the outcome is going to be. It's just like you can sit, you have these kids and they know what one, two minus one is, but it, as related uh, as relating to relationships, they have no idea if I do this that there's going to be an opposite or op- there's a same or opposite reaction to what I'm doing, and then I'm going to have to be able mm-hmm. to deal with that. And they're just like, oh, I can I can call you old woman, and you're mm-hmm. supposed to just take that. You know, and if I call back to come come back at you and tell you that, well, I won't even go there. I want to put no words out there for them, but it's. It, they have no sense of a pride. They have no sense of who and what they are. Mm-hmm. There's no sense of when my parents, when somebody came over, you knew you went in there, you you spoke to them. If you had a gift or something, like my sister played piano, you you knew you were going to have to play the piano. Are you going to sing or you're going to have to speak? You're going to have to do something. And when that was done, you yeah. they didn't have to tell you, okay, bye-bye. No, it was you knew before you got there because they told you that this is where mm-hmm. we begin and you end. And you go to your room yeah. and do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, I think and that's just, important. Um, yeah, one, one thing that I learned, especially being in the military, we have – uh, core values, like for me, I was in the Navy, and our whole core value was honor, courage, and commitment. And, you know, and right. that's something that you so, are supposed to hold with you wherever you go. Uh, so to have that honor, that courage, whenever, you know, to stand up for yourself, and that commitment to get the job done. Um, and, that's, right. uh, and, I, and that's one of the things I want to implement in my family because uh, it's all about tradition, you know. Right. And I was talking to my godfather today. Uh, for y'all, mm-hmm. for the ones that don't know that I'm a, a priest in Palo Maambe, and uh, mm-hmm. and we have a family structure, and part of that family structure is having uh, a, a family and having a godfather, and and kind of put that whole thing together. But we we're, we're talking about how the family structure has been broken mm-hmm. down, actually taken away from people yes. here in 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 this country, and and because of that. The, the one thing that we always did was to hold tradition, and that's how you keep your family going. That's that's mm-hmm. what you're kind of brought up off of. You know, when it comes to, like, religion, you have your spiritual systems. You say, you know, spiritual system is one of those things that you need in the family uh, uh, because it teaches discipline, and it teaches right. how to get things going. And remember, this is what we had from the beginning, you know, and that's mm-hmm. all that we had. So right. in order to make sure your family survives, they have to know the customs and traditions of what family is and how family operates. And those yeah. are the things that we're not really holding to in our family. You know, we're just bringing up families, bringing up kids just to bring them up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not having anything that they can fall back on or hold on to. Nothing. Right. They don't even give them God. They can't even give them the love that they're supposed to have. It's like you're mm-hmm. they're there, uh, but the parents are – you can't raise your children for trying to raise yourself. You're trying to do what a child is supposed to do. You once you you and see this is this comes from you knowing that sex creates a baby. And whether you have a baby or not, when you get one, your life basically 
has to stop because you're going to have to give them what they need for this world. So if you thought about it like that, I think you people would stop and think, do I really want to do this? It's just like we're just popping kids out here and they're, they're – we're uh, – I don't want to get into the next topic. I want to. I want to stick, stick to where I am. I'm gonna try to stay there. I don't want to take. I don't want to take y'all too far. I don't want to scare you. But it's you. We are having this thing as a people. Now we are African Americans, uh, whatever you want to call that continent uh, that we came from. Uh, it was renamed for somebody else. So Africa really isn't the name for it. But for all intents and purposes, that's what we're going to say. We are a spiritual people. We have always been that. And now we've gotten to the point where everything is about money and sex, how how much sex, Mm -hmm. how much money we can get, how much sex we can have, and how many people we can have it with. And then you've got these reality shows that are bringing this into your face, into your home. Um, This is... Uh, I want your money. So this is one I was looking the other night. I want uh, half of your business. And so you can do this, and I know you like her, so we're going to be in a relationship together, and we're going to share you. Oh, really? Oh, uh, really? Okay. I'm going to leave that. Um, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole because there's so much to be said to for me saying that. But it's just like, and your children are watching this. And when my parents let us watch television, even though my dad had a job where he was uh, there from early in the morning, he would leave at 4 o'clock in the morning. He wouldn't get back to 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening. And then he had to shape shift. He was the uh, black person that was in charge of the entire thing. And the Caucasians were trying, they basically, I heard, he didn't tell me this because I was one of those children. Uh, that you always, somebody's going to, it, it don't laugh, honey, because you one in your family, too. I listened to everything because I was so quiet. I heard him and his friend from England talking, and they told him no N-word is going to tell me what to do. And they would follow him home trying to kill him. And the last time that they did it, uh, Axel, his best friend that was from England, he had gone back to England. So there was no one to follow him. And they literally hit him, pushed him off of a bridge. My dad, I remember the people, the doctor, the ambulance driver uh, said that that car had to have flipped five or six times. My dad, it, it took him, and I say this now because I look at it because of what he had to go through, but he went through it for us to have a better life. And and my dad walked around in his robe because he was depressed. You know, I didn't know what that meant then, but he was depressed. He walked around in his robe for months to, to the point that my mother had to push him to go back and to work. But he didn't want to go back to that company. And I didn't realize it then why he went to another job. It was because of what he had to go through. You mean I have to go through all this and then you want to take my life? for me telling you the right thing to do, for me having the education and the knowledge for you all to do this job the way they're supposed to be, and half of them didn't even know how to read. But they want to kill you. Yeah. You know, these are things that we have that we cannot allow our ancestors to have, ancestors to have gone through this for nothing. For us to get online for, uh, for a dollar? I remember I heard somebody say, uh, somebody said something. Uh, I don't know what they were talking about. I just heard the last part of it. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And I'm just like, um, okay, now what the? What is it? And I'm thinking, uh, if you don't have to have dollars, what happened to your character? What happened to who and, who, who and what you are? My dad, my parents were always, don't you go out there and embarrass us. Wherever you embed, get, uh, where you get, uh, we embarrassed, and you're going to get embarrassed. If you do this, you're going to do that. These kids, I went, I was somewhere, and I think I've told this story. I was in Walmart, and I feel like it takes a village to raise your children. And, and it's mm-hmm. a part of me to, if I see something that kids are doing, and I, I assume that their parents are going to uh, intervene in a, in a moment. 
So they're talking about, and I'm telling you, they couldn't have been in more than seven years old. Talking about this little girl mm-hmm. who, her booty, another seven-year-old, six or seven-year-old booty. And, yeah, because, you know, because she did that and the other. And I thought, okay, and I looked at her parents, and, they was, and the mother was sitting there talking as though he wasn't doing it. If I saw it and I was feet away, I was, I was way, way far away, she should have saw that. And after a while, after he did this for like 30 minutes, I was just like, oh, no. Because even the little girl's mother said nothing. And I said, stop it. I said, then you stop it now. Huh? I said, you stop it now. You don't do that to her. You don't want anybody to do that to you. And I'm thinking the parents are going to get, they didn't say anything. They just let it just happen. It just, it was what it was. And so when mm-hmm. my parents took, go ahead, James, go ahead. No, I said a, a lot of that is all learned behavior. I mean, and that's the yes. stuff that's passed down uh, from generation to generation, and yes. thinking that that's okay. And you gotta remember, right. and I and I usually speak on a black conscious uh, state of mind. Okay, so most yes. of the stuff I so when we we're taught, we're not taught in the ways that we're supposed to be taught. We're literally yeah. in another group of people's culture, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And so we're yeah. raised to think exactly how they think, okay, yeah. at, at the end of the day. And these are the traditions that we're passing down, not really right. those of our own. So, And, and mm-hmm. that's why I think it's important to have core values within your family so you, could, you can get out of that type of way of thinking. And you right. can't help everybody. Like I said, it's, people are going to be who people are going to be. You really have to look out for yourself first and then yourself, your family, and then your community. Right. So that, and right. that's why you have to kind of start inside, in home start first home. with yeah. that type mm-hmm. of thinking. Yeah, because it's, it's going to be very hard to kind of change other people's minds about what they think is right mm-hmm. and compared to what you think is right, you know, because what's, mm-hmm. what's, what could be good for you might not be good for somebody else. You know, and, exactly. and the way that I'm taught now, I'm taught that there is no real such thing as good or bad because certain exactly. things can affect people positively that might affect you negatively, you know. So, right. But you, having your own core values is, is basically right. the way to get out of that and then find other people who exactly. have like-minded ways of thinking. Mm-hmm. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. There's no, there's no division in that. There's no, oh, that you tell your truth and I'm going to tell my truth. There's no your truth and my truth. There's the truth. It is what it is. I mean, Stop there, there, this. Stop this foolishness. Yeah, I mean, there is a truth and there's a difference between the truth and a lie. But what, could, what is good for you might not be good for other people. That's why I say what right is right is not exactly what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Yeah, yeah of course, right. if you're telling the truth, you're telling the truth. But in, right. some, in some instances, you you lying about something might actually save your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In some cases too. So it, it's it's uh like I said, it's all about perspective in that case, and that's why you can't really go off of what other people are thinking because it really has nothing to 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 do with the way your reality is designed. And that's another thing I kind of want to talk about is really um, creating your own reality and getting out of this fake simulation kind of so to speak mm-hmm. that we're kind of living in now how how to create that and how to manifest the things that you want in your life mm-hmm. and I, I agree with you and, I, and you know I, i'm a christian and i'm you know i'm not shy to, to say that in the bible there's precedence for everything that you're saying there's plenty of people in the bible who use lies to keep from getting killed you know to protect their mm-hmm. assets to protect their their family um so i, yeah. I agree with you and, and the bible I, can, I can't even i don't have my who who confronted me, but there was one person, I can't even, I don't want to get too deep into it, but basically he was at someone's table and they were eating pork, right? And he was like, well, should I, if, if, if they're eating pork and it's a sin, and basically if, if, if a sin is a sin to you, then keep to what keeps you pure. But if right. a sin is not a right. sin, to, if it doesn't, you know, if it's not a sin to them and it's not affecting their lives, then mind your own business essentially is what it, is what it gets down to. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, don't get well, caught that's up in what everybody well, that's- is doing. Because then that's when you start getting into um, religion versus spirituality. Yes, 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 right. true. Mm-hmm. 
and and there's a there's a core value in spirituality and people who have what you have is they're going to you you're you're going to that's going to what is it reflect in how they treat you how they treat your children how they what they're telling your children and you have to be careful Instead of, I call it what we're going through right now as the people, we, I call it the Esau syndrome. Uh, we sold our, our birthright for a bill of goods, for a bowl of oatmeal, just because you were hungry mm-hmm. for a moment, uh, just because it made mm-hmm. it seem what they were cooking, made it seem like it was very, very nice or whatever, you, he gave that, Esau gave that up. And God said that he hated it because he was profane. And we have gotten to the point where that is where we are. We're down there in that I went to Africa. And, mm-hmm. and when I got back, my reaction from people was because of what they had heard. Instead of something being passed down from their uh, generation, uh, there was something because yeah. Africa, like I said, is just a is what they call it now. That was not what it was called from the beginning. That whole continent was one name. But so, but you have when I got there, it was I don't even know how to. There's no there's no words of the peace that I got when I got there. When I tell you when I got off the plane, it was. I was walking, I was just walking, just encountering the mm-hmm. people. And it was, I, I had to fight back tears. And at point, I had to turn my head sometimes. And it was, even as I was going through the country, and it's not what they show you on television. It's, it was when Clinton, and I was very angry with Clinton, when he sent someone over from the Nile to shoot bombs into Sudan, into some I'm not going to almost curse, uh, into something that they had made, that they had de- destroyed, and then left all mm-hmm. of the bullets and all the ammunition, and then you wonder why that's happening, and then you're going to fight, and then that meant that you didn't care about whose life. And then instead of us looking at that and saying, hey, they t- that, there are some innocent people there, that's, and because they put names to something, and they give it a name. Oh, this this is they're the Middle Easterners. They're this, that, and the other. They're and now they don't have a life. They're they're those 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 are those Mexicans, and they're they they have a life. Mm-hmm. And we're and we're responsible for that. And we are. When I got there, and James and I were talking about this earlier, because my first thing is this is what the first. This is of many encounters. I have problems with time schedules, but I can tell you what happened. And I had to gone to with my friend to uh, help him get on the plane or to the helicopter. They were getting ready to go to Mozambique. I really wanted to go at that mm-hmm. time, but he took me later. And and but he and his friend, it was, and he let me know before the friend got there that they were really good friends. And so as they were walking away, he went to they held hands to get on and they were getting ready to go and I was, and I thought what the hell is this and then but I couldn't feel any other way because I knew that it wasn't that and I thought uh-huh. there's because there's a relationship with men I, I saw CNN and it had um, uh, Don Lemon and the guy um, that he has his own show now I can't remember beautiful black man um, I think he and his wife are divorced now. But they were there was like four mm-hmm. of them on there, and the collaboration that they had with each other, because I was going to turn the channel, because what they were talking about was not interesting to me. But their reaction with each other, that connection with each other, made me stay, and it made me smile, and it made me feel a certain kind of way that I hadn't felt in a long time. And that is, we have gone against that because everything that they're trying to teach you but everything that we're getting they got from that motherland and they take it in and repackage it and say that this is i was looking i was going to give you all a scripture and it was um moses something had happened in the 
the adders and snakes were biting the people. I think God had sent them into the camp. And, um, and they were biting the people, and they were dying. And God told him to put the snake on the uh, – uh, to make a golden uh, thing and put it on top of the, 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 gold, the, the staff. And, and when they looked up, if they looked at it, they looked up, they would live. And that they couldn't, they would, they refused to look up and live. Some of them did, and it was okay with them, but others didn't. And and I, again, I say this is where we are right now. So I don't want to keep going through that uh, whole little thing. There's so much about our culture that we don't know because when we came here, that we were we were made to not speak our language. When we came here. We were not allowed to uh, come to congregate with one another. Um, and then I was looking at something the other day. They even enslaved babies and killed babies. And, and uh, uh, it's, it, that's another topic, but these are, this is the place that, where we are. Now, there's that generation, some of that generation is still here. And they're trying to still keep the, they're trying to still be in power. And you're going to always have that. And you can't say that that's anything else but hatred. But how can you hate something that you never love? And I don't, I don't, I never could understand that. So I'm going to say that because I, I will, yeah. like I said, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. No, uh, no, you're, you're right. Um, because there has been a system put in place that has been woven for years and years and years yes. and years. Yes. And it's, it's going to take time to to kind of break out of that that system and that way of thinking. Um, yes. But and, and I and uh, I say it again, just that's why that family unit is important to hold yes. those Thank core God. values for mm-hmm. uh for for the generations to come and the generations to come. Mm-hmm. Like uh the spiritual system that I practice has has been around uh, for a very, very long time, very, mm-hmm. very long time. And uh, one of the things my godfather would tell me is, like, look, holding core values is important so it can keep going. Yeah. He said, look at what we're doing now. He said, this right. has been around uh, since, since the since beginning. Century. And, yeah, it's, and, and, it, and it is still here, and now it's here yeah. in this country. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it has not been... It, 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 it's it's pretty much the same since since the beginning of, of how they used to do things. Like everything right. is, is uh, very similar, you know. Of course, it's mm-hmm. a different different land, different language, different environment. So some things have to change because because of that. But yeah. uh, with within that, how it's done is, is exactly mm-hmm. the same. And, it's like, and as long as you have these values. Uh, what you're teaching and what what you want and what you love would never go away, and never that's what away. and that's why you feel we're doing. It never it never go away. It, it'll always and continue. It, and, it's, and, and it's not a system of hatred. It's not the I hate no, it's you not because it's not. It's because it's not uh, the, the, where I'm not going to include you because you don't belong. Am I? I, I say this. And we're talking because this is this is a family matters. This is family values. This is uh, we started this because of my dad's uh, family meetings that we always had. But my grandmother, even though she went through that, that she wasn't a slave, but she was the product of that. And but she never mm-hmm. spoke ill will of any of anyone. And mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. uh, people coming over to the house. We had um, an uh, insurance uh, guy. His name was John Pagesti, and he was an Indian guy. We had the man who owned the bank down there. He would come there and visit my mom and, and my grandmother and eat her. We call, I call her mama. My mother, we call, we call my mom. I call her my dear. So when you say that, when I say mama, mm-hmm. you know I'm talking about my grandmother. But they would come there and sit there. And I look at the little house now, we thought we were in a mansion. But, and they never, they never, they would wear their suits in there, they would, and they would sit there and eat tea cakes and drink uh, lemonade mm-hmm. with my grandmother just to hear what she had to say because she had that gift of making you feel included. And, and it had nothing to do with anything like that. And we, have, we are losing that. 
in exponential uh, uh, values right now. Uh, I'm, I think I'm yeah, I think something. That, I'm sorry. Well, I was I was going to say that the system has undermined our values and our our structure, yes. and they've undermined us for so long. And it's like our the ground that we stand on is unstable ground because of all the undermining that has happened. So uh, right. like, you know, like mm-hmm. I always say, you know, we have to start within our home, um, strengthen yes. our homes. And James mentioned it earlier, and I always use this analogy when I'm talking to um, students and young soldiers. You know. When you're mm-hmm. flying in an airplane, they always tell you that in the event of an emergency, put your own mask yes. on first. Right? Yes. And there's mm-hmm. a reason for that because if if you pass out and I'm worried about you, but I don't protect myself, and I pass out, then we're both dead, right? So we have, to take, um, we have to take seriously um, the life that we have, take ownership of the life that we have, and mm-hmm. do things to, to make it better. Um, take a look at ourselves, like, am I being respectful and showing love to people around me? And am I modeling that for my child? And am I instilling yeah. those values in my child? Those are things that if we don't take ownership, because, like, one thing that I notice, and I can't stand it, when I'm at a, mm-hmm. a, a function or an event, you know, not only an event, not formal, but, like, when I'm around a gathering of friends, a lot of people let yeah. their kids just sit in the room with all the adults while they're talking. And yeah. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I, I wasn't raised that way. We're, we're not talking about things that are age-appropriate. And even if we weren't talking about anything serious or whatever, they don't need to feel like they can be comfortable sitting next to me, at, you know, and interjecting in the conversation. Right. right. There's, there's, right. A, there's a level of respect that you instill when you keep children in a child's place. And if you don't exactly. do that, then they don't, they don't get that. Then they go to school, they disrespect their teacher. And these days, right. parents want to fight the teacher instead of getting their child in check. So. Yes, yeah, because they don't know their place. They don't know in the hierarchy where they where they fall. You are a child, and it's, it's important. You know? Children see they want structure and they want rules and they want yes. you to guide them and tell them what to do. That's why they test you because they want to know like where what is okay, what can I do, what can I do. My daughter is thirteen months old. Yeah. And when I tell you, she tries me, right? But I, and I, and with love, I let her know, like, this is your place. First of all, you, you sit down at the table and you eat. I don't let her run around the house and eat. She sits at the right. table and eats mm-hmm. with her, right? And when, right. I, when we go out to restaurants, people always say, wow, that's the best hey, baby I've ever seen. It's because she's used to sitting at the table and eating dinner because we do it every exactly. single day. Mm-hmm. But, it's, you know, right. when she goes out to a restaurant, you know, it's not the first time she's ever seen a table. Right. People who right. have their kids mm-hmm. run around the restaurants because that's what they do at home. You, you taught them that. You, you know, even if you don't mm-hmm. teach them something, you still have taught them something. So you have to um, be aware, be uh, mindful that even when you're not saying something, you're saying a lot. And be exactly. mindful of your actions and what you're um, instilling in your children. Yes, yes. Because they're yep, because you you are forming their minds. They're, you are you are uh, raising little adults. I mean, they're already they came with their gifts. You can't give that to them, but you can give them the wisdom and the knowledge and, and to take the rough edges and to take the road make the road a little bit smoother for them. Again, because we have people yep, now that, that kids don't even know uh, why it's being why it's hard on them. I was talking to someone and she was just like. Oh, you were being rough to them. Uh, they're not my friends. I'm paying them for a service. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to tell you how to do your job. I shouldn't have to conjole you into doing your job. But if I if, I'm, if I have to tell you that, trust me, I'm going to write a letter later. But you mm-hmm. and a later, they did. They had to do exactly what I had said in the beginning because they didn't know their job, and that's that's because no one. Has, my parents would challenge me. My grandparents would challenge me. That I would wonder why it would make me angry. Uh, how old are you? I'm I'm three. No, no. Are you really three? Somebody, I thought somebody said that you were another age. And they want you to know mm-hmm. why you know what you know. They want you to be able to ca- calculate yeah. stuff. They would always. Uh, engage you in something. You have to be engaged. And we, you can't. You see. You. I don't care where you go. The whole family sitting there looking at the telephone. The boob tube. It's mm-hmm. worse than the boob tube. This this thing is taking our minds. This is really making us into uh, the separate wise. Mm-hmm. To come in yeah, and and uh, oh, put well, a message I on forgot, your phone. I had, to, I had the phone muted and I was talking away and I didn't get my point out. Oh. Um, so I don't know if you guys, <laughs> you probably, I don't know if you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. You haven't. It was actually a really good movie. It was called Ready Player One. Did you guys hear about it? It came out uh-uh, last year, I think. Yeah. Okay. Did you see it? 
No, I haven't. Uh, well, you should see it. It's a really no, good I movie. Not. Like I, I was surprised. I didn't think I would enjoy it, but I really, really enjoyed it. And one of the things mm-hmm. that stuck mm-hmm. out to me was like all these issues that we're talking about now. Imagine how much worse they'll be. 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years in the future. And you have these exactly. people, and I'm mm-hmm. talking about not just children, because, you know, we, me and James kind of grew up in the video game era. And now we're grown right. adults in our late 30s, and there's still grown adults in our 30s that spend almost all their time playing video games, right? Imagine yes. those same yes. people at 60 and 70. Imagine everybody in the house being hooked into a computer system. You know, cause right. this game, this gaming mm-hmm. thing, like when we were kids, it was designed for kids. But then they started mm-hmm. finding ways mm-hmm. to keep people hooked and hook them right. into their adulthood. So now you have adults that are playing these video games that initially were just for children, and they dedicate hours, right. and they dedicate real money, and they, you know, they live their lives in these machines. And so, exactly. you know, fast forward 100 years of however, you know, whatever time period this movie takes place because it's futuristic, everyone has this, yeah. like, um, alternate uh, virtual reality game that they're playing. It's like World of Warcraft. Because it's like or, it's not real. Uh, Mine, Minecraft, all those games where it's like a, a open world and you just run around and find stuff. It, it's basically right. like that. But everybody played it. Every single person played it. Like they weren't showering. They were barely surviving. Yeah. And they spent all day yeah. like, in the game. And they would spend yeah. real money. And, and it's like mm-hmm. it, it, that's not what the movie was about. But you saw, it's like it was like silent commentary. They weren't talking yes. about that, but you could see it. Like that's where we're headed. Like if we're not careful, right. and we don't disconnect and start engaging in real life stuff, we're going to have people yep. mm-hmm. who have their entire life inside of mm-hmm. a inside of a computer system. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's true. And, 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 and that's part of. And I was going to yeah, say, it, it that, sounds, when you hear it, it sounds crazy and it sounds really sci-fi. But think about the fact that. 30 years ago, you didn't have adults playing video games. And now, like, 30% of the adults spend at least some time on a video game. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to get better. Ridiculous. It's only going to get more involved. Go it's going to get worse. Mm-hmm. That, that yeah, it's, all, it's all about, yeah, it's all about creating your own reality, you know. Mm-hmm. And if you continue to let somebody create that reality for you, that's what you're going to get. You know, and I, mm-hmm. and it's not just video games. Uh, we have people that watch TV all day, right? Yeah, and they're yeah. stuck in that. They're, they're stuck in that fantasy, uh, yeah. video game fantasy. You know, and this mm-hmm. is all keeping you away from what really is going on. Like I said, right. life is about you creating your your reality for yourself. At the end right. of the day, and how you how right. you can manipulate the the things that are in your life. So it can mm-hmm. make your life more easier and more comfortable. Yeah. And, and so that's what, you're, that's what you're getting. And Tiffany's right. 30 years down the road, that's probably what it's going to look like. Yes. People are going to be hooked you know, into the game. Like, like they're already hooked into the game. They're already spending real money in the game right now. People, kids exactly. are on games for hours at a time. And it starts, and nobody, from the, and it and starts when you're real young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's no one to control them. There's no one to say enough is enough. I remember my parents. I'm not saying that I, I, I was in the into the games as well, and and they're the old games, the Galaga and all that stuff. And yeah, my, we'd have to uh, beg and borrow and ask my dad, you know, because we got our allowance every week. And it was I want to go down there to, to the game shop because they had an actual game store that you can go down there and play the games in. And you just pay a quarter mm-hmm. for, you know, until the, to the game was gone. But you, and my dad said, I need you to be back at this house. You can go. And he's out there cutting the grass. But you can go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I need you to be back home uh, by 6 o'clock or roughly 7 o'clock or something he had said. But we knew before dark 30. And, but we had already left that early, so we knew he gave us like three hours, two or three hours to do what we had to do. And... Mm-hmm. And when we didn't get home, when we said we were going to get home, uh, guess what? Who walked through the door? My dad with all of his uh, uh, working in the yard gear, his cutoff shirt, and everybody's <laughs> like, ooh, they're your dad. And I, as I walked away, as I walked away, I heard every one of my uh, ships, boom, boom, boom. But you knew you were going to get back in that car and get your butt home. And you knew when you got home, you were going to be punished because you didn't come home when you were supposed to. That there's mm-hmm. no one to say, to draw a line with these people, with, with, with this generation anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's just, 
and I remember, I remember James and I used to play the games together all the time. And it's, it's, <laughs> but I remember one time we had gone somewhere, and this is when I felt like uh, he had gone to, the, and so I made a point to sort of pull him away from it. I was just like, something's going to happen if I don't get, he would, he would pass by the store window, and he would stand there, and he would look. And I was just like, oh, my God, it's got him, you know. So I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to think how – and then we started playing different kind of games. But they got these games now. Uh, they, well, they've had them long before. Uh, they, they, you're shooting uh, one another, and they're, mm-hmm. they, the people are looking like real people. The real blood is coming out, real, uh, and you get extra points for shooting them in the, in the head. You're getting double extra points for shooting them in the heart. You know, you're doing – and it's, it's taking you away from uh, reality. Because I remember when I was working at the hospital with my mother, and I, I hated working there with my mom because they wouldn't call me by my name. They were just like, that's Miss Green's daughter. And I'm just like, okay, we're not going to do that. I have a name. But we, I remember because I was in the emergency room, I was in the pharmacy, I was doing a whole lot of stuff, I was a phlebotomist, so I saw a lot of stuff. One day I went home. And there was a wreck, an accident on the expressway. And the guy was one of the engineers that was on the road. Somebody had hit him, and the spike that was, uh, the steel spike that was sticking up out of the ground, his leg had wrapped around it. And I jumped out to go and help him, and I saw it, and I didn't realize until I got home that was real. You know, that, that's, how we, that's how far these games get you away from uh, reality. Right, and that goes it back is, to what you mentioned, people being in, um, desensitized. That's, that's what yes, that does. That's why they can, see yes. some, they can see someone get shot to death by the police and not react to it because they've and, been, they've been yeah. simulating it for their whole life. So when they actually see it in real life, it. they're not affected by it. And a little known fact, yeah, a lot wow. of those games, especially, especially the super violent games, a lot of those games are funded and were developed by the Department of Defense. And, like, oh, when wow. we used to go to um, – we used to go to arcades and stuff. And this is when I started to get older. When you, in the beginning of those video games, they would have like the little FBI warning that pops up at the beginning. FBI warning. And if you if you yep. if you actually read it, it would tell you that this is developed by the Department of Defense. And it's like a one of yeah. those grooming things where they start grooming people at children to to have yeah. that mindset to be you know to have that soldier mindset and to be controlled and that kind of thing. That's wow, what that's I what that comes from. Like that's where that comes from. It's psychological. Mm-hmm. They put a lot of effort into developing those games for the effects that it has on you as a, as a person right. in society. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, wow. Exactly. That is true. Mm-hmm. And this is, an, an, it, it, this is a well-oiled machine, and they've done it. Uh, uh, they don't think about life. They don't think about until it comes to their children. And sometimes they don't even think about their own children. And then all of a sudden they start to look at it a little bit different uh, then you, but this is a this is something that we've created. It's there, but you've got to control it. Anything that you don't control, it's controlling you. Anything that uh, you can overdo, anything. I eat eggs, and I and I and I eat kale. I eat. Uh, I'm a vegetarian now, but I can overdo it just on eggs. I can overdo it just on the. Kool-Aid. I can overdo it. You can anything done to, uh, to uh, over the top. It's not good for you. Mm. Right. Yeah, and I know I'm. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out because we've been on the phone. Oh, uh, we've been on here for a little bit longer. And like I said, Tiffany is the the strategizer. And she will put, keep you on in line. We don't want to stop talking, but we got to stop talking. And we're going to – I don't know, because there was so much that I haven't even talked about today that we're going to – so we're going to um, hopefully the, on the next podcast – well, the next podcast, because we, we still got to get uh, black girls missing, we got to talk about that. Uh, maybe in a few months we'll be talking – we'll finish this part up. Because there's stuff that we really – we need to get ourselves together. And this is why we're right. calling this meeting. And this is why we call this a family meeting, because we need to figure out where we are, where we, what we did in the past, where we're going. And this is where we're going to go. And so I am going to say is 
uh, look up and live. And I'm going to leave that. I think that's, um, I forget what scripture that was uh, when Moses was telling them that. But uh, go through your, uh, read your Bible with more than just your eyes, with more than just your brain even. Read it with a uh, spiritual and allow God to put what you need into you because we are we are totally getting away from this. And so I'm gonna I'm not gonna be the one to continue to talk because I will. I'm gonna turn it over to Tiffany so we can turn it over. I think um, Tiffany ended it last time. So and James can end it and we will. We I will say adieu to you and and to Tiffany. All right. Thank you, family, again for joining us. I hope that we were able to bring some things to your attention, maybe open your mind a little bit and get you thinking about some different types of things. Um, as always, I like to plug our websites and our locations where you can find us. Um, you're listening yeah. probably on Podbean. You can find us there. You can also find us on Facebook backslash Ties That Bind, or you can go to TiesThatBind.com. Um, again, I'd mm-hmm. like to say thank you. If you have anything that you want to share with us, like maybe you want to share your own personal story, you can email either one of us. Just click on our picture on the website, or you can message us on Facebook, and we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Um, did you give them the, the, the website, uh, the Ties That Bind, is T-Y, yes. as in Yodel? Okay, I did not spell it. So it's T- Ties That Bind, T-Y-E-F. So Tango, Yankee, Echo, Sierra, for those who speak phonetic English. Um, <laughs> that bind. dot <laughs> com. Yes. She said, so we yodel. Will... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh man. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I just want uh, everybody to kind of think, think uh, hard, and kind of think twice about you know what kind of messages that you're relaying to your family. Um, just like in commercials that we see today. Uh, you got a lot of commercials that describe what kind of pain that you're in. Now, imagine that commercial being, pay, being played years and years down the road. Um, talk about, yeah. hey, have you ever had back pain? And all of a sudden now you have back pain because you've, you had this message, subliminal message, playing in your head for years and years yeah. and years um, mm-hmm. down the road. Okay, yes. so that's, that's, that's what you have to look at, and that's what I'm trying to get across. The, the things that you put in your child's mind and your family's mind continuously is how they can end up developing. Yes. So we want to we wanna make sure we're always enforcing, um, especially our people, always enforcing the minds of our people to put mm-hmm. positive thoughts and positive activities in their families' lives so we can get out of this system and start to think and create our own reality. All right, again, yeah. I'm James. I'm on the bridge. I know that in this life we're taught many things, but I challenge you to find out what matters the most, and that is yourself. Know your past so you can operate in the present to secure the future that you always dreamed of. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And we will, and I want to leave, and he left that with you, and I'm going to uh, piggyback on what he said. We have, by all means, removed every avenue by which the Negra could get light, and if we were, would remove the means for them to perceive that light, we would have done our job. This is in a law, a law uh, Congress uh, law down in it's written down. This is this is something you need to read it, and then when and all, all I get and get and understand it, and we say I do and good night.